Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I am incredibly glad to have you. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to go over some of my bookish stats from 2023. Now, I've mentioned this before, but my bookish stats are not necessarily all that in-depth or elaborate or complex. I don't necessarily find a lot of value in tracking some of the more tedious details that can be tracked with regard to reading. There are just some certain things that I like to keep in mind when I'm reading, and those are what I track, such as the genres that I'm reading, the authors that I'm reading. So I don't think that this is going to take up too terribly much of your time, but I do hope that you enjoy anyway. I do like watching similar videos from other booktube content creators to see what stats they are tracking, how their reading year went, and things of that nature. Now, this was my very first year using a reading tracker spreadsheet. I use the reading tracker created by Allie over at Hardback Hoarder. She created an amazing spreadsheet. It is very in-depth and comprehensive, and I highly recommend checking it out if you're looking for an easy way to track your reading that's probably going to track anything that you could possibly want to track, and it is very customizable as long as you can figure out how to customize it. I highly recommend the spreadsheet. I'm absolutely using it again in 2024. Sorry if the angle changed or anything. I got a notice that there were substitutions for my grocery delivery, and I had to make sure that they were okay. But anyway, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the statistics. So overall on my spreadsheet, I logged 157 books read for the 2023 year. However, two of those books were ones that I actually marked as DNF. So it's probably closer to 155. Now y'all know that I don't actually mark a book as DNF unless I've gotten a significant portion of the way through the book. And I'm talking about like at least 25, 30, maybe even 50%. If I'm still within the first couple of chapters, of the story and I decide that it's not for me. I do not consider that a DNF. I consider it like a trial run. I picked up the book, gave it a little try. It wasn't working for me and I put it down and I really don't classify those as DNF. So those do not end up on my spreadsheet. But my spreadsheet does leave room to mark books as DNF and so that's why I wanted to include those two here. So those would be part of my spreadsheet. My best reading year in terms of quantity for 2023 was September. I read a whopping 20 books in September, which is absolutely wild to me. I have never before read that many books. So I don't even know how I did it. And surprisingly, my worst month in terms of quantity was March with eight books. I cannot remember what was going on in March that caused me to read so little. I would have expected June or December to be the lowest and both of those are actually tied with nine. And that's kind of interesting to me because both June and December were the only two months where I was actively away out of town and wasn't reading as much because I was actively away and out of town. So I would have expected one of those months to be the lowest, but they actually weren't. They beat March by one book. So March was the lowest reading month with eight books. Out of the books, it says that 149 of them were purely listened to on audio. One was an ebook and two was a mixture. And that's not quite accurate because I do remember immersively reading at least four or five books, The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, House of Sky and Breath, Tower of Dawn. There were definitely more than two that I did a mixture of audiobook and physically reading. So I probably just marked some of those other ones as audiobook listening, which is totally fine because technically I was listening to them on audio, but there were more than two that I was immersively reading. And one of my main goals for 2024 is to immersively read consistently throughout the year. So I'm hoping that this number is a lot greater in 2024. In terms of genres, I read quite widely in 2023, but as per usual, some books are pretty hard to classify, especially one of my main genres, which is thrillers. And that was definitely the most read genre in 2023 with 50 books that I classified as a thriller. But y'all know that there's typically a lot of overlap between like suspense thrillers and mysteries and things like that. So it is possible that some of these were not 100% categorized appropriately, but I did what I could with what I knew about the book and what I consider a thriller. Really no other category came close. The closest other category was contemporary. And I would say for the most part, they were contemporary romances. That's another kind of genre that I have problems differentiating. What classifies a book purely as more romance than contemporary if it is a romance that is set in contemporary times? You know what I mean? But for the most part, I would say a lot of the contemporaries that I read that feature romance heavily and romance is a main part of the story. I do also feel that they have enough extra going on that they don't need to be classified purely as a romance. So I would definitely say that a solid portion of the contemporaries that I read in 2023 did have a romance featured heavily, but I only classified
classified seven of the books that I read this year as purely romance, meaning I thought that the romance was first and foremost and there really wasn't anything else significant going on to warrant it being classified as a contemporary instead. Fantasy and mystery were both tied with 13 books and I think that's pretty good. I think 13 fantasies is pretty good, especially since for the most part I tried to read those immersively. So I'm pretty happy with the amount of fantasy that I got to, but I definitely want to increase that number in 2024 because I consider fantasy one of my favorite genres, but because of my lack of ability to concentrate, I don't read nearly as much of it as I want to. So I want to increase that number. And mysteries, I would say for the most part, all of the thrillers that I read contained a mystery, but to me, a mystery is definitely more slower paced and it's less about the main character being in danger and in a fight for their lives as it is trying to solve a crime or something like that. So out of all of the books that could potentially be classified as a thriller or a mystery, 50 were thrillers and 13 were mysteries. I also read 12 historical fictions, which is surprising. I would have thought that number would be higher, but then again, I have to be in a specific mood to read historical fiction and I'm not always in that mood. So I'm okay with 12 historical fictions during the year and then everything else was very negligible. I read three books that I classified as dystopian, only one classic, and that's really all that I aim for. Every year is one classic. One fantasy romance, I think I categorized House of Sky and Breath as a fantasy romance. Some of the other fantasies, now that I know about the category, I would probably classify some of those as fantasy romances as well. That's probably another genre that's going to get a little bit muddied there. Literary fiction, I actually have seven on here, which is interesting. I read three horror, two of which were Grady Hendrix, and I absolutely loved them. One nonfiction, but I also have one true crime, so both of those can be considered nonfiction. Zero poetry, because I hate poetry. One memoir slash autobiography. Oh, When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Klonathy. I typically don't read any of those, so the fact that there's one on here is pretty interesting. Sci-fi, I read three, and again, true crime, I read one. So very, very widely, but thriller absolutely trounced every other genre category. In terms of audience, 147 of the books that I read were geared toward an adult audience, and that does not surprise me at all. I've mentioned this many times, but I am almost completely moving away from YA. For the most part, the only YA that I'm reading these days would be maybe sci-fi or fantasy that is still classified as YA or new adult, but for the most part, everything that I'm reading these days is adult, and I think that that's accurately represented here. One of the books I read was middle grade, and that was only to satisfy a Slayer Fest reading challenge, otherwise I probably wouldn't have read it at all. And then I had nine YA, and the vast majority of those books were completing series that I was already in the middle of. So I would not be very surprised if that number of YA actually went down in 2024, even though it's already quite small. In terms of book type, 99 of the books I read, I classified as a standalone, meaning they didn't have any companions or sequels to go along with them. 18 of them I classified as new series. They are part of a series, they are not standalone, but I had not previously read any other book in the series. So I essentially began a new series, but yet the vast majority of these are not series that I'm going to continue with. And then 40 of these books were sequels slash companion novels. I consider a companion novel a sequel, even if you don't have to necessarily read all of the other books in the series in order to read that specific book. I'm very, very pleased with this number. I have been heavily focusing on continuing, completing, making progress in series, and I did a lot of that in 2023, and I hope to continue that in 2024. So I am very happy that 40 books that I read could be considered sequels or companion novels. In terms of star ratings, I had a four star year for sure. 77 of the books that I read, I classified as four stars and I'm very, very pleased with that. If I were to go back and really think about the books that I rated four stars, I could probably easily downgrade some of them to like a 3.5 for sure. But I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the 77 four stars. I had zero ones and zero 1.5 stars. Typically, I don't have one or 1.5 stars because if they're getting that low, it means that I'm going to probably DNF them. So I'm not surprised that there are zero in that category. I had one two star, four 2.5 stars. And oddly enough, the two and the 2.5 stars came much later in the year for the most part. I had 38 three star ratings, 22 3.5 star ratings. Again, 77 four stars. I had seven 4.5 stars and four five stars. And there were four books that I didn't rate. There could be several reasons why I decide not to rate a story. A lot of the times it's because it's a nonfiction that I feel uncomfortable rating. I can certainly rate those based on how the story is told, but I do know that a lot of people who are writing like memoirs and autobiographies and stuff like that are not necessarily writers. So I kind of feel a little bit ick about that as well. But again, I could rate the story based on how it was told, but at the same time, I don't necessarily feel like I have the right to rate it based on my enjoyment. That seems a little bit weird. Like I didn't enjoy your story. Like you lived a stupid story. You know what I mean? I don't feel like that's right. So some of the times when I'm not rating a book, it's because of that. Other times I'm rating a book that I really just don't know how I feel about. I have very mixed and conflicting emotions about, or sometimes I won't rate them because I went in knowing I wasn't going to love the book. I was kind of reading it for a specific 
specific reason and I got through it and I don't feel like labeling it with a rating because it's not entirely fair. So there were four that I kept as non-rated. And then again, I mentioned the two that I actively marked as DNF. My average rating throughout the year was a 3.7 and I would like it to be a little bit higher, but I don't think that it's ever going to be higher than that. I think 3.7 is pretty darn high and I don't imagine that that's going to continue in every single year for sure. Now, in terms of authors, I read very widely in authors. I rarely duplicated an author. Out of all of the books that I read, I think I only duplicated authors 18 times, meaning every single other author was a one-off. I only read one book by them in the year. Out of all the books that I read, 100 of the authors were authors that I had already read before. Now that stat is a little bit tricky just because if I had read a new to me author, let's say in January, and then read another book by that author in June, that book would then be an author that I had read from before, but of course it counts. And then the remaining 57 of the books were from either authors that were new to me or debut. The debut author stat is a stat that I really need to work on because for the most part, when I'm logging a book, I'm not thinking about whether it's a debut. I'm thinking purely about whether or not I have read the author before, but also I feel a little bit sketch about labeling a book a debut if that author has since published a million other books. You know what I mean? It would be like reading Stephen King's debut novel and then calling him a debut author on my spreadsheet when we all know that he's been writing for like 50 years and he's one of the most prolific authors ever. But I really want to get better about notating whether or not the book was a debut or not. So some of the authors in here that were marked as new to me could have in fact actually been a debut author. And then the last statistic that I really want to go over is publication year because a big goal of mine in 2023 was to focus on backlist books, which I feel like I very much did. Out of the 155 books that I actually completed, only 36 of them were from 2023. And the main reason that even so many of those 2023 publications got read was because they were all sent to me in book boxes. And as y'all know, I try to read those as they come in. Otherwise, I probably would not have read nearly as much of them. Oddly enough, books written in 2022 were tied. So 36 of those as well. So I believe that's 72 of the books that I read were from 2023 and 2022, which is interesting. And then 2021 was actually the next highest number with 18. So I was focusing on my backlist, but not heavily backlisted books. I had 12 books from 2020 and 10 books from 2018, but all of the other publication years were a lot less. The oldest book that I read was definitely Emma, as that was published in 1815. But most of the other books were written in the 2000s. I did have a book from 1981, which was the true crime that I read about Ted Bundy. I also had a 1998 book as well as a 1993 book. But again, the vast majority of the books that I read were all in the 2000s. So backlisted, but not like super old or anything like that. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all the statistics that I wanted to bring to you today. If you didn't already know, I participated in Bookmas last year. So from December 1st through December 25th, I produced one video every day leading up to Christmas. And several of those videos contained end of year content. So there are other stats like videos there, including how I did with my series, all of the series that I completed, DNF, caught up in, all of that stuff. There's a video on that for 2023 if you were interested to see how I did with series. There is also a video talking about all of the books that I bought versus how many of those that I actually read. And in my goal recap video that I did, I also talked about how I did with regard to my reading challenges in 2023. So this video does not encompass like all of the things that I've kept track of for my reading year in 2023. I'll try to remember as well to leave all those videos down below in case you were interested in seeing them. Please let me know what kind of bookish stats you track and if ratings is something that you track, please comment down below and let me know how many of each rating you had for the year or if you know what your average rating was. If you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me that little spreadsheet emoji to let me know that you were here. You all know that I love seeing your comments. I absolutely appreciate the engagement and it helps me and my channel so, so much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week. Typically I do too, depending on what I can do. And I would sure love to connect with you in any of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all.